Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm planting up my amaryllis. I'm really excited. I just got a bunch of beautiful bulbs in from Color Blends. I've got 15 total, five varieties, three of each. So in today's video, I just wanna unbox the bulbs, show you what they look like. We're gonna be potting them up and then I'd also like to talk about just some planting and care basics. So let's just jump right into the unboxing. I kinda of got ahead of myself, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. The first group of bulbs here are called Double Delicious. These are beautiful. They're a double red with a little bit of white. And I just wanna show you, like I haven't pulled them out of these bags. I could see in the box and I could see how beautiful they were looking, but these are big bulbs. So these are um, called colossals or 34 plus centimeters, I think, which is the measurement around. These will create a beautiful show. All right, so I'm gonna put these back in the bag so I don't mess up and get these mixed up. In fact, I think I'm gonna just keep the rest of the bulbs in the bags as I pull them out. They all look just about the same. They're all the same size. Next variety is Samba. This one is a really bright red with white margins and it also looks kind of like frilly around the edges. It's a really beautiful amaryllis. Then we've got Antarctica. I always like to have at least one variety of all white amaryllis and these are a single white, clear white, really pure and beautiful and I think I've got the perfect containers for these. Then we've got what is this one? Flamenco Queen. This one's cool. So this one's white and then it's got red margins and it's kind of like a deep red and then it's got uh, deep red striping with speckles all over on it. So it's a really unique looking amaryllis. And then this last one is actually my favorite. This one is called Dancing Queen and this one is a white with red double. It's just a really beautiful full looking plant. Um, okay, so let me get the box off and I'm gonna grab a couple more containers and then we'll start in on some of the basics. So the thing about amaryllis is that it does take them quite a long time to form their blooms because you get them as the bulb and I'm gonna just pull these, I'm gonna plant the dancing queens first. You get them as a bulb, you get them planted and then it takes them a while to get going. I would say it takes an average of about eight weeks for them to get up and bloom. Um, there are some varieties that are fast. I think there's one called Rapido that blooms in five weeks and then there's others that can take up to 12 weeks. Uh, but I would say a good average is eight weeks. So as long as you're getting them in the pot and going and they're in a warm enough environment, they should get up and bloom by Christmas. But it really doesn't matter if they bloom by Christmas, Christmas to me. I don't even mind if they bloom into January because it's something beautiful to look forward to after the holiday season has passed. There's also different sizes of bulbs. You've probably seen this when you've gone to shop for amaryllis. Um, you'll find them huge, you'll find them really small, you'll find them in gift packs, you'll find them in bulk. The thing is, is that you really do get what you pay for with amaryllis bulbs. Um, not that there's anything wrong with any of the sizes, but when you buy one of the small bulbs, um, they are less likely to produce a great big show. They'll produce maybe one stem that has two or three blooms on it, as opposed to when you get bigger bulbs, um, they may produce three or four stems with up to four to six blooms per stem. So the, uh, the size of the bulb, I mean, really determines how many stems and blooms you're gonna get. I mean, this whole bulb right here is basically a storehouse of energy. So the bigger it is, the more energy it has. Also, the bigger amaryllis bulbs will produce stronger stems. So if you've got one like this, you may not even have to stake it once it's blooming. The only reason why you would have to is if it gets too top heavy from having too many blooms, which is not a bad thing. Um, if you see like the really small looking amaryllis bulbs, maybe in those gift boxes that you buy, oftentimes those are small and they may produce a one stem possibly and some leaves, but they're usually fairly weak, so they need to be staked almost from the beginning. So just keep those things in mind. But really, like I said, there's nothing wrong with either one. You could get a few of the smaller bulbs and put them together in a container and have a, a really beautiful show, or just get one great big bulb and you'll get a great show from that. There's also two different ways that I'm aware of that people plant amaryllis bulbs, other than those who get to plant them outside, and those I think are in zones nine through 10. I garden in a zone five. So we have to treat them as house plants, especially this time of year. Um, so some people will plant them in a specific bulb vase, which I don't tend to like to do. I'm gonna be planting mine in soil, so I wanna talk about the bulb vase first. So basically, 
It's a glass vase that bulbs out at the bottom and it's where you put a layer of rocks with a little bit of water and then it necks down in the center and then bulbs back out. So your bulb can rest right above kind of that skinny section and it keeps it, the bulb away from resting in water but the roots can go down and find the water and that way you can kind of see the whole progress of the, um, the growing, which is really fun. I've done that before. Um, I think that's a really fun thing to do with kids just to really like observe how these plants grow. Uh, but I don't really feel like it's a long-term solution and that's why I tend to go for soil. When you're planting in soil, which is what I'm gonna be doing today just in various containers, you just wanna use a regular potting mix. I'm using my Espoma Organic potting mix here. What I do is I fill my container, which I already put a little bit of soil. I got excited last night when I was getting all this out. So I started filling containers with soil. I fill them right up to about the level where I want my bulbs to sit, which I actually think I might need a little bit more. I have some in this container too. And then we're going to fill with soil around the bulbs. The thing about it, so see, I want them to sit about right here. That way they're nested far enough down when they get some height and some weight on the top, they won't be as likely to teeter as opposed to like if I had them up a little bit higher. So let me get my other two bulbs. I'm planting all three of these in the same container. And this will be gorgeous. Typically, you don't wanna go up too big in size. For this size of, of bulb, you would want anywhere from a six to eight inch pot at the largest. They don't like to swim in their container. And then I do think I need to get a knife out to open this bag and we're gonna put a little more soil around them. And how handy is this? I have my measuring cups right here. I'm gonna to try to do this clean, which is never easy. You only want to put soil about halfway up the bulb. The reason for that is you don't want to risk getting any soil or water down into the neck of the bulb because that can cause them to rot. And typically this is just enough anchoring to keep them in place. And then I'm going to follow up with a little bit of top dress, which I either use like a moss or stones. Today I'm using some Spanish moss that I need to grab. So let me finish this up and I'll grab the moss. I don't do as well with the measuring cup as I do with my hands. So this is preserved Spanish moss right here, which I think looks really natural. It doesn't tend to hold on as much moisture as regular moss, which can be a little bit uh, detrimental to your bulbs if it holds on to too much moisture. So I think that this is a really good one to use and it goes a long way, like a little bit stretches so far. And I think that this makes for a really pretty presentation, especially once these start to grow and show a little bit of green. And there's plenty of soil. I mean, like the only reason why you put soil up around the bulbs is to kind of anchor them in place. Um, so whether you decide to do rocks or moss, it's totally personal preference. That looks really pretty. And this one is all done. So let me move this one and we're gonna plant the Antarctica's next. I think they're gonna look especially good in these green containers. Can you imagine like the tall green with the white on top? I think it'll be beautiful. These have excellent drainage. These are really old. These used to be my mom's and she passed them down to me. And so we've both gotten <laughs> really good use out of them. This hole though is larger than the other holes that have rusted through these containers. So I'm gonna grab a coffee filter real quick just to help eliminate extra soil leakage. Coffee filters allow for uh, water to still seep through and they usually last long enough, like a season long, to keep the soil in the pot. You know what, as I'm thinking about it, all of these containers are gonna be the same. I'm gonna do soil, place my bulbs, put a little bit more soil around and then top dress with Spanish moss. The only difference is the containers all look a little different and I do have green Spanish moss as well. So I'm gonna plant them all up and then we'll take a look when I'm all done.
looks beautiful, beautiful. All right guys, so I've got them all planted and I know that they don't necessarily look prime today, but they will. I mean, just give them a couple of weeks and they'll start pushing leaves and their bloom stalks and we will give updates. So make sure you're subscribed so that you see those updates come through because it's a really exciting process, which is why Amaryllis makes such a great gift. Um, either for kids or teachers or whoever, friends, family. Um, it's one of those things my grandparents used to love um, having an amaryllis every single year. My mom always gave them one and they would measure it every day and record how much growth that that amaryllis had and it brings joy. Um, and so I think it's just a really worthwhile thing to plant around this time of year. So I'm gonna run through all these pots and show you what went into each one and I'm gonna try to remember. So the first one here is called Dancing Queen in this little concrete pot. Um, next, we've got the three Antarcticas. I planted those separately in the tall green pots, which I think that's gonna be a really pretty look. Uh, next, we have Flamenco Queen. Uh, you might actually recognize a couple of these containers. We did a spring container arrangement in this like years ago, maybe three or four years ago, uh, but I planted all three of the Flamenco Queens in here, and this is the only one that I used the green. I tend to like to go naturals on most everything, but the green I think looked good with the silk galvanized uh, metal. Um, in this right here, we have Double Delicious. This was actually a container I used in the second video we ever filmed ever. Um, and I still have it around, I still love it. It wobbles, I have to wedge it up, but I really like it. I think it's really pretty as a centerpiece. And then the Sambas went into these terracotta pots, which terracotta in the end is probably the best choice for any plant because it allows oxygen in and out of the container um, and it's really healthy for your plant's roots, but I think they're gonna do well in all of these containers. So when you're done planting them, you need to water them in thoroughly and I will show you like right here, I'm gonna do one that has a saucer. I have saucers for all these pots, but I only brought them up for the terracottas. Um, so you just water them in thoroughly around the bulb, making sure not to get any in the bulb. So we're just gonna go around the outer portion here. And watering is really easy because I don't like a ton going forward, like that's perfect. Um, you probably wanna check them once or twice a week depending on where you have them in your house. Um, mine usually needed about once a week, just a thorough water and then they're good to go. Um, they like temps like we like. Uh, so, you know, room temperature, we keep our house like at 70, maybe a little bit lower than that and plants tend to really like those temperatures. Now, um, something to know, they typically like somewhere between 60 and 75. So when you have them on the warmer end of the spectrum, they will grow faster. So if you have them in a warm spot in your house, you can expect to see their bloom stalks and leaves a little bit faster. But once they start blooming, if you can move them to a cooler spot um, toward the lower end of that temperature um, kind of spectrum, then the blooms will last longer where it's cooler. So just keep that in mind. And the last thing I wanted to talk about really was, uh, well, two things. Light, they like a bright spot. It doesn't need to be direct sun. In fact, their blooms will last longer if they're not right in direct sun. So I'm just gonna put these in a bright area and they should do really well there. And they don't need any fertilizer. So when you plant them, they have all the energy they need to bloom. The only time you will start fertilizing them, fertilizing them is after you cut their bloom stalks off if you wanna keep them as a house plant. Um, which that's a whole different subject. You can keep them as a house plant. You can encourage them to bloom the following year. We've done a video about it. We'll link it down below if you wanna learn a little bit more. Um, but a lot of people do treat these as annuals. They kind of treat them like the, you do your poinsettias um, and you toss them after they're done blooming because sometimes they can, it can be a fussy process to get them to bloom again. So anyway, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, so anyway, I think that's pretty much it for amaryllis planting today. And again, I, uh, like I said earlier, we will be doing updates and showing you, we'll uh, be posting pictures and all kinds of stuff and probably showing them in our Christmas tour that we will most likely do later on in December. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it inspired you to plant amaryllis because they are really a fun holiday plant. So thanks guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.